graffiti, living in Missoula, Montana. Uh, trains are everywhere. You see it all the time. Never really understood it. Kind of got on the internet, started looking into it, and I was like, that's what I want to do. I like the way it looks. I love everything about it. Me and all my friends started painting a ton, and when I say a ton, I mean like a ton, and I spent thousands of dollars on spray paint. Every weekend we'd go paint, every day after school we'd go paint, we'd sit in our basement, you know, draw in our little black books, and that consumed my life for probably a good five, six years, <laughs> and along with that came stickers, and this is how I kind of stepped into screen printing. At first I was just cutting little stencils and spray painting them. And I went, there's gotta be a better way. And my high school art teacher taught me how to make lino cuts, which is uh, basically just carving in a wood block or linoleum, inking it up and using it as like a large stamp. And then I would create these wheat pastes out of those. So I went from being able to make stencils that were like that big to stencils that were like that big. So I could increase my scale. Uh, takes a long time to carve those blocks though, which I just, I hated. So this is how I created my first screen print ever, and it was to make little black and white stickers, which I then cut out by hand, every single one, tedious hours and hours, blisters on my fingers, and I got obsessed with screen printing from that. So I started screen printing these little faces. That's my great grandma on the right. That's about like five feet tall. And I just like loved screen printing, large, huge, being able to make big additions, super easy and quick and fast. And I could make all the images on the computer and have it perfect. You know, with a wood block, there's a lot of messing up and you can't control the outcome a lot of times. Screen printing, it's just like, you know what you're doing and it's, you just keep going. So, I started phasing out of my graffiti phase when I started college, and I went to University of Montana in Missoula. And I went mainly for woodblock printing, which is the big guy on the left, which is that same process of carving. And I just, I hated it as much as I did in, uh, in high school. It just wasn't the right medium for me. And a professor, they didn't teach any screen printing classes, but he kind of was like, come hang out with me after class, I'll teach you how to screen print with multiple colors, which is my first screen print over on the right that I ever made. Here's a couple more of my first prints. Very simple, just black and white on a colored paper. Um, just kind of getting the hang of, it's hard to line up the colors at first when you don't know what you're doing, and I think that was the biggest hurdle for me. And then just before graduating, I was given this book by my professor. Worst album art or cover art I've ever seen. And I was like, what are you giving me? And I opened it up. Oh, I like, I fell in love. I mean, gig posters. It was everything about graffiti, like the bold lines, having fun, weird imagery, everything like that. But people were doing it as a job, selling it, making a living off it. and. I was just, I was hooked. So that brought me to my first gig poster ever, which is for a band called Shannon and the Clams. Um, I just reached out to them, they were playing in my town. I said, can I do this for free? I will just give you posters. I just wanna make a poster for a band that I like. They were like, hell yeah. And so I did it. Um, my advice is don't work for free, it's not a good, <laughs> deal for you, um, but to start out, you know, it's always fun. So after that, I started making these posters for my bands for free. I'd usually just trade them to get into the shows for free or drinks at the bar, and you know, I wasn't really making any money off of them. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just, I wanted to screen print, and I just started doing it. Uh, about two years after I started, I got my first real job for Yonder Mountain String Band. Um, and it's, it was kind of hard transitioning into somebody being like, we want an actual concept, we're paying you, we, you know, we need to work together. So it was a big learning curve of working with someone rather than just creating my own image and being like, that's good, that's it, that's what you get, 
rather they have some control and input. So this was a huge like learning process for me. I learned a lot from them. Their manager was super helpful in getting me started. And from there, I went, I guess I can make money doing this. I can, you know, maybe sustain myself. Uh, are any of you familiar with screen printing? <laughs> Raise a hands if you are. Okay, so not, not a ton, which um, I'll explain it really quick. It's basically a really intricate stencil that is put into a mesh screen, which then you pull the ink over it and through it, and that transitions to your surface, whether it be a shirt or paper, and every color that you do has to have its own layer. So, for example, this guy on the right first had to print the yellow on all the sheets, and then the pink on all the sheets, then the green, that color, that color, that color, and you just go, go, go until you line them all up, and that creates the final image. So it's kind of a tedious process, but there's like, there's a lot of thinking behind it of like, how am I going to line these up? What, what are these colors going to do when they overlay each other? This is an example of some fun things that you can do with, this is just a transparent black. So these are all the colors printed down on it, and then a black layer, but it's not opaque, so you can see the colors behind it, which add a bunch of shading into the image. So even with just one color, you can add so much detail into your work. So here's that final print with the transparent color, and then without it. Just kind of gives you an idea of you know, what a screen print is. This was in, I don't know what year it was, probably 2017, maybe 18. I was working at a shirt shop. I learned a lot about screen printing there. And I went, I need my own space to make my own prints. My dad owned this rat infested shed. And he said, it's all yours. And I was like, oh my god, what a dream. What a nice shed I now have. Um, after about a year of fixing it up, he was like, if you insulate it, do everything, it's yours. Just have fun with it. So this is my studio now. There are no more rats that I can find. They're in the walls, though. Um, I started acquiring equipment slowly while I was working at that print shop. Uh, my first task was to get a printing table. Um, it's got hundreds of little holes in it with a vacuum that holds the paper down. I actually traded, I printed some shirts for a friend of mine and he made this custom for me. Um, a weird washout booth that I made from just scrap metal and lumber, which is to wash out your screens and everything. Uh, I was gifted this for a hundred bucks, an exposure unit, which is how you make the stencils. For anyone who doesn't know about screen printing, um, you'll coat the screen with what's called emulsion. It's just like pink goop, and it'll dry. And then you'll put a stencil, which will be black, on it, and light will hit it. And wherever the light hits that goop, it hardens, and everything else can be washed out, which creates your stencil. Um, so this was probably the biggest part of my studio. Once I had this, I could, you know, make anything. All right. Any other questions about screen printing before I just hop into process at all? So I get asked a lot, um, do you just make whatever you want and the band just takes it? No, not at all. Usually never. Um, a lot of it is back and forth with the band of like sketches. Um, they'll give like a theme like this band. It was all rainbow themed for an album they have. Um, and it's about, oh, I kind of forget, these goblins. Joe, do you remember what it's about? <laughs> um, basically, uh, these goblins come to Earth. They take over all the rainbows. They start catching them, and the Earth is fighting back. And so this was, I just wanted, like, a rainbow to be, like, a creature that was, like, just shattering everything beneath it. And we ended up going with the concept on the left. From there, I'll usually draw everything with ink. Um, so on the left, it's all just pen and ink, scan it into the computer. 
I'll take it into Photoshop and I'll color it really quick, you know, not even thinking, just like, where do I want colors? Where do I want these? How are these going to overlap? And then from there, I start dialing in details more and more slowly through the process. Um, fun things to work with are like color overlays, which I talked about a little bit, but like a rainbow is a screen printer's worst enemy because you have to print every color. So if they want a rainbow, you're like, that's going to be like 20 screens. Oh my God. So I printed the yellow over the red to make the orange and the yellow over the blue to make the green to save me some time and then the transparent black on top of everything to do more shading. So it's like a lot of problem solving. Here's the final image. It's for the band Primus. Um, I then, refu I, a band usually picks the concept that I don't want them to make. <laughs> And I'll recycle the other ones, like this one. They rejected this design, so I pitched it to another band, Umphreys McGee, which then turned into a poster like this. Here's a recent poster I just did. You guys watch SpongeBob? I love SpongeBob so much. Um, it was for the band Ween. They came to me. They were... Uh, doing a summer camp music festival. And uh, I don't know if you know this, but Ween does a lot of music and songs for SpongeBob. And I was like, summer camp music festival, a burger, greasy burger, SpongeBob, why not the nasty patty? Let's reimagine this and throw it out there. So this one, it was a rush job, so I drew everything on the computer. I'm really bad at perspective and stuff, so a lot of times I'll just grab weird photos and throw it in and kind of draw around them. So on the left is my scattered brain of what I'm thinking, and then over on the right is the drawing that I start working from. Slowly start adding color into it, textures, things like that. And then send it off to the man for final approval. They approve it, good to go. A nice little nasty patty from uh, SpongeBob. I was stoked that they let me do that. <laughs> um, the pandemic hit, and as you can imagine, most of my jobs went out the window because all the concerts were gone. Uh, there was this weird rise, though, of these online shows, which every band was doing. And this was my first job after the pandemic hit uh, for this band, Kitchen Dwellers, which is actually from Montana. And they were doing a reimagined set um, of Pink Floyd in this little tiny cabin out in the middle of nowhere. And they're like, you want to do a poster for it? And I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. Uh-oh. Oh, my gosh. Something popped up. I hope it wasn't important. Um, So I wanted to draw the cabin for sure, and I just thought of having like these psychedelic bursts just coming out of it. So I ended up drawing the cabin, reimagined, kind of cartoony, and then going pretty heavy with kind of like Paisley 70s patterns. I wanted to use a lot of transparent colors and overlay them, make it look as psychedelic as possible. Literally ripped off the text from Jefferson Airplane, uh, <laughs> which I thought was a perfect fit reimagined it into this, which is the final product. And I just want to show a few slides of more like concepts growing into the final images. This one's for a band called the Disco Biscuits. Can you tell how influenced I am by SpongeBob? <laughs> the guitar player from Fish. This was a fun one. Went pretty literal. They were playing at a show called the Bomb Factory. And I thought, what better than a big old bomb falling down, didn't explode, and now just a growth of flowers coming up from it. Here's another one from Mo. I wanted something just big and gigantic in the sky, something kind of surreal that didn't make any sense coming out of this weird turtle shell structure. <laughs> I don't know how I came up with this one, but they loved it. It was really fun to make. This one, 
was when the pan or concerts just started coming back. And it's for these two bands, Big Something and Too Many Zoos. Too Many Zoos is like a New York street band, like hitting on drums, stuff like that. And I went, you know, let's play off like the summer vibes of like New York City. What's better than like a big old ice cream truck? You know, have big old ice cream cones like they just fell from the sky on top of it. And then here's one more. Just SpongeBob. I love SpongeBob. <laughs> so all those are kind of my illustrative works. Um, I would say probably 60, 70 percent of my work is in that style. Another style that I like to work in a lot, though, is kind of this collage, uh, punk rock, like found imagery, you know, kind of going back to the old days of people making their own posters where they'd Xerox their posters. It's got all the grit and texture on it. There's not a lot of control. Um, so one of my favorite hobbies is to collect old magazines and just scan them at high resolution. All the little like tiny illustrations that people probably just glaze right over. And I would say I probably have like 200, 300 just sheets like this in my computer that I can always just reference. Um, so here is a very failed poster that I made. It never went into the world. Um, it's for a band called Modest Mouse. Um, they've got a song called Wild Pack of Family Dogs, and I really wanted to reference that. And they didn't like any of these, and I was like, I really want to do a collage piece for you. I think it fits your aesthetic really well. And they're like, let's go a little more psychedelic. So I came up with this, also got rejected. Sometimes I get a lot of rejection in my job. That's okay. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. They were like, let's have it a little desert themed, you know. Let's dial back on the psychedelic. And ended up with this poster. And that little cowboy in the top left is probably like half an inch tall, a little cutting that I blew up huge. I love the distressing that came from it. Use this photo from National Geographic on the bottom, flipped it around and made the background so you kind of get the landscape back there. And then the little bursts around his head are just from that illustration. So it's kind of like just collaging them all together. Here's another example of that style, which is just literally two images. I found this one with the guy in the ski mask, and I was like, I want it to be so much like more menacing. Found this. I don't know. I don't even know who he is. It didn't say under the picture. So <laughs> just threw him in there. Made it look like a disco nightclub party scene. Voila. Finished. I like working in this way a lot because happy accidents can happen all the time. Uh, I was cutting out this picture, ripped it, and was like, oh, shit. Oh, no. Like, it was, I had an idea for it, and I was like, I just destroyed it. But luckily, I kind of reworked it a little more, and I went, I, I can work with that. Maybe the rip is good. Maybe it is. And Jeff Tweedy, I showed them the image, and they loved it. And my idea was to use these lines connecting the lady's head in between. But then I was stuck with this circle. It was for a, a lozenge commercial, like in the 60s. And I was like, that'd be perfect to throw the band name in there. So I started working on the little badge for him. This is the hall that he was playing at in New York. And I was like, I'll work that in, kind of make it look retro. And they turned it into two shows. So I ended up making two posters that then go side by side or on top of each other. And this is the end product from that. Another one for Wilco, Jeff Tweedy's from Wilco, um, is this guy, which I found this little milk carton, fell in love, and went, I can do something with that, make it look weird, you know, make it huge, just towering over everything, throw a ladder up there to give it some scale. Um, yeah. That's all I got. I only hit half an hour. Uh-oh. Anyways, yeah, um, I'm at Twin Home Prints, and that's what I do for a living. You guys have any questions? Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, distressing kind of comes from a bunch of different ways of working. There's some that you can just buy online. A lot of times, like, out of old magazines that I'm finding, I'll, like, cut out the back white page and I'll scan it at a really high resolution and then I'll just, like, threshold it so I get all those natural distressing textures and I can just plop that onto things like that. Yeah. On this screen, between you and me, I look at these prints for so long before they go into run, and I get so sick of them. So it would probably be that guy right there. <laughs> yeah. Why do I, I'm sorry? Why do I reuse them? Oh, like the concepts, you mean? Um, sometimes, like, I have such a vision in my brain, and I'm maybe bad at getting it down on paper, and if a band doesn't like it, I'm usually like, I really want to make that really bad. So I'll, like, actively try to find a band that I can use that concept for. It's just, I guess, I, I really want to make what I want to make, but I am working with bands. Um, so it's hard for me to give up on an idea just because someone doesn't want it. I assume that someone else will eventually want it. So I think it's just me kind of holding on to what I like to do and, you know, having some artistic ability in it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So this one that I referenced, which turned into this guy, was all drawn by hand. Every element, even the text, I drew by hand. Um, there's something like, what's the right word? It's, it's more personal, I feel like, when you draw by hand. You get those little mistakes that you can't erase. And as much as I hate them when I screw up that one line, I end up loving it in the end because it looks like a human made it. And although you can get that feel when you draw everything digitally, like the Ween poster, it feels less personal and it feels like it was always just on a computer screen um, and never really came to life. And that's also why I like screen printing all my designs, is I hate just having a file on the computer. It feels very like empty and I'm not very attached to it, but once I can bring it into the physical realm, it feels like something that I've like personally made, I've touched, every color was printed by me. Like I have more of an emotional attach attachment to it, which I think lends itself to also hand drawing everything rather than doing it on the computer. If I'm able to do something by hand, I typically will. Anybody else? Um, I would say the best bands, the ones I like to work with are bands that I listen to, that I know their music. Um, you don't always work, like I don't listen to a lot of bluegrass music and a lot of my clients are that kind of genre. And I know what it sounds like, I'll listen to them and stuff, but it's not necessarily like something I would listen to in my everyday. So even though I'm creating stuff for them, I might not feel that emotional attachment to it. Where bands like Wilco, uh, some more like psychedelic or punk bands like the OCs, um, where I know their music, I've listened to it for so long, I've loved their album artwork, I know other people who've made posters for them, and those are the bands where I feel like I can really give myself, like put myself in the poster because I can relate to the band really strongly. And those are usually like the clients I get really excited about, um, which I would say is about like 50% of the time, which is a decent amount. You know, but definitely a band that I listen to are my favorite clients. Yeah. Uh, 
So I went to college and I was printing there in their studio. Once I graduated, I realized I couldn't print there anymore. And that's why I got a job at a shirt shop, um, which allowed me to come in after hours and print at their place. Um, and it just wasn't the ideal studio set up to print on paper. It was great for shirts, but they, it wasn't like it wasn't the best place for printing big posters. So that's when I went, I'm going to work here. I can print here until I save enough money and slowly buy all my equipment and start my own shop. Um, so that's kind of my thought process was that was if I can't print myself, I'll work somewhere that allows me to print there, you know, just till I can build myself up. So, and they were huge. They taught me so much. Like, I can't even explain how much I learned working at a shirt shop. Yeah. Favorite kind of music to listen to? Hmm. Probably like loud psychedelic y punk stuff. Probably one of my favorite bands is like the OCs. I don't know if you know them, but if not, check them out. Yeah. It would be Dead or Alive? Dead? Probably Bach. Um, <laughs> I don't, I normally I would say Modest Mouse or Wilco, and I do print for them. So I guess I got my wish. Yeah. You. To print posters kind of depends on how many colors. Um, usually you can get a couple colors done a day. Um, the design can take anywhere from a day to a couple weeks, and then to print will usually be a week to two weeks because you have to wait for the colors to dry in between, stuff like that. So it's kind of a long process from beginning to end. It can take up to like a month. And that goes back to where I was saying I look at these images for so long making them that I usually am sick at, of looking at them by the <laughs> end. <laughs> Joe. Um, I had a friend, Neil Williams, who was actually here before at Knotstock, who kind of gave me advice of how to reach out to fans and stuff, which is basically just emailing, 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 build a portfolio, send it to their managers. You don't hear back for weeks and weeks and weeks, and then eventually you hear back from one person, work with them, get referrals from friends. It's, it was a lot of building up, a lot of just not hearing back from people or a lot of rejection, which is tough, especially as an artist, if somebody doesn't want your work. But gradually, as I worked and improved on my art as well, uh, clients are, I guess, m more reaching out to me than me reaching out to them, which is nice. It's a lot easier than reaching out to people and just getting rejected constantly. Um, to have people come to you eventually and say, we want your artwork, we came to you personally, it's kind of, it makes all that rejection in the beginning worth it. What advice? Um, if you want to get into gig posters or screen printing alone, My first advice would probably be work at a print shop. Learn how to do it well, because once you know how to print well, you can pretty much make whatever you want. Uh, advice after that with working with clients, I would say always be nice. Don't be an asshole. Uh, <laughs> that'll bring people coming back. Um, become friends with people who want to do the same thing that you do. It's nice to have people to talk to. Um, it's kind of a small community, gig posters. It's sometimes hard to like anything that's kind of like a niche little subject. Surround yourself with those people and you'll learn from them and I guess just stick with it. And you might change paths, who knows? Like I did with graffiti. I thought I would be doing graffiti my whole life. And then I just kind of, I, there was something felt off with it and I just kind of went with the flow and now I'm here, so. Yeah, I won't I won't tell those though. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do that from time to time. Yeah. Um, usually it's like shirt graphics or logos. It's It's stuff I don't. It's like it's not my favorite work. It's usually why I don't show it and things like this. Um, but it is income. It's little things that I do in between posters. Um, posters are what make me the most happy. And, but as a graphic designer and illustrator, there's so many opportunities other than just posters. And I'll usually take any of those on if I have openings in my schedule and stuff like that. So. And pizzerias do trades usually, so I've got like pizza for life, pretty good. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> yes, that happens a lot and it's very stressful. Especially as like a one man shop, you learn very quickly how to manage your time, but sometimes you're working on the client's timeline, so yeah, I'm usually working on probably like three at a time. So I'll be drawing one while I'm printing another. So half the day I'll be printing, the other half I'll be drawing, and just keep it going and going and going. Mm hmm. Big name companies? Uh, not really. Most of them are beer companies, but I think you guys might be too young for that. <laughs> but I do some beer labels and stuff like that. I think those are probably the biggest, biggest clients of mine. Yeah. Worst client experience? Uh. I once chased this band around for five months to get $300, which is not a lot of money and that's a lot of time. I won't say the band name. <sighs> huh? I got it. <laughs> I got it. Small amount of money, but I was like, I'm getting my money. Um, some, yeah trying to think of which one. Some clients will just ghost you right in the middle. I think the worst client experience is when a band doesn't know what they want and they don't understand what I make and they think I'm going to make something pretty and I'm like, have you seen what I make? <laughs> and they're like, no, let's do like some pretty trees and maybe like a bird in there. And I'm like, no, I think you got the wrong person. They're like, no, you're our person. Like, sign the contract, everything. So I would say those are the worst clients. People who don't, yeah, they don't know what I do, really. Um, writing a contract has helped a lot. I didn't do that for a lot of years. Now it's like you approve the final sketch, which I was showing you guys. Um, after that, I make the artwork in full. You're allowed two minor revisions. Those can be color, uh, the amount of texture, or what the type looks like and how legible it is. Other than that, nope, it's all up to me. It took me a long time to realize to do that. Uh, to put some limitations because there are bands. I worked for Yonder Mountain String Band once on a poster which they just hammered it in of every little change, change, change. And it lasted months doing the poster. And by the end, I don't show anybody that poster. It does not see the light of day. Um, yeah. Because I want to make things that I'm proud of. I want the band to like it, of course, because it is their product and their band. But most importantly, I want to be proud of what I'm making and putting into the world. Yeah. Any questions? 
<laughs> well, what are we at? 11.38? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got to work with Courtney Barnett. I don't know if you know her. And she did a show in Stockholm, Sweden, which was awesome to do a poster that was outside the U.S. Um, a lot of my stuff, though, is around the U.S. I usually don't work in my hometown, which is kind of strange because they always tour there, but I'm usually shipping prints out like across the country, uh, just wherever the show is. So, yeah, Stockholm is... That's my one and only international poster as of now. Yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah. That was just an art print. Um, it's a passion project, exactly. It's my favorite, f favorite phrase. Um, so yeah, things like this um, are things that I'll like squeeze in between gig posters um, because, you know, you can't just only work with clients your whole life. You're going to drive yourself crazy. So like, yeah, the big morel mushrooms up top with the smiley faces, uh, these flowers down here. Some bands give me the rights, like Wilco always gives me the rights to the artwork afterwards, so we share it. So I'm allowed to make art prints without the band name on them and things like that. Um, some people hire me. The plants up top in the green was a paper company, and they said, we'll send you thousands of sheets of paper if you print 100 of these for us and just tell us if you like screen printing on our paper. So they basically let me do whatever I wanted on that one. Um, yeah, and then I also print like a lot of these little mini prints, little designs like that where, you know, I can print multiple on one screen and cut them out. It's kind of fast and it's nice to just have different sizes and things like that. And Yeah, yeah. And I kind of feel that way too. Like I hate seeing a poster that I love and I'm like, I don't like that band though. That's such a bummer, you know? So I try to give people options of art prints as well. So if they like the artwork a lot, they can also just enjoy that. Yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. Any other questions for you guys? No one asked me if I've ever been arrested doing graffiti. I'm so excited about that. The answer is yes. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hang out in the train yard. You might see something, but. All right. Well, we are printing, uh, as she said, a poster for Knotstock over in what's called the Beaver Dam. Um, and we're just starting it, putting the first color down. It's a four color print. So if you guys are interested in the screen printing process and how those layers are going down, how colors are used, uh, we can definitely explain it like in person if you have any questions about that or like how the screens are made or anything like that. So that's definitely a cool thing to check out to see live printing because usually it's an artist hunkered down in in my shed with no windows by myself. So people usually don't see behind the scenes of that. So that's a cool opportunity to see that. Yeah. Well, thanks guys. <laughs> <laughs>